I've talked about abandoned carts so many times already, but it is so important because if you don't have abandoned cart recovery emails set up on your Shopify store, you are simply leaving money on the table. It is that low hanging fruit. So what are you waiting for? Get it set up on your site right now. I'm gonna walk you through in this video tutorial, my favorite Shopify app for how to capture abandoned cart sales. Hi, I'm Elle McCann, owner of Curious Themes Web Development Studio in Nashville, Tennessee, and we have been Shopify experts for over five years now. And I really stand by this, what I said at the beginning, of abandoned carts. If you're not using them on your site, you are just losing out on money, and it's just the low-hanging fruit. It's so easy to get these set up. So abandoned carts are anytime someone adds items to their cart and they start the checkout process. They've given their email address, but for whatever reason, they haven't finished their purchase. So this actually happens way more than you would think. It can happen just because they're distracted all of a sudden, or maybe the shipping is too high, or they wanted to check their bank account first and then they forgot about finishing their purchase. And there are a lot of statistics online that really highlight how important it is to have on your Shopify store. So my favorite way to capture these abandoned carts are through a series of emails that you send out to them that promotes them to come back to your store and purchase. It can go through the benefits more of why they should, or it can offer a discount code, any of those items to get them back to your site to make that purchase. So my favorite app to do this with is called Consistent Cart. And we're gonna hop into my screen now and I'm gonna show you exactly how to set up your abandoned cart emails through Consistent Cart app, as well as some other things that can also increase your conversion rate on your site that are also in this app. So it's kind of a two for one. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I am in my Shopify store backend now, and I'm in the app section over here on the left-hand side. So I don't have the Consistent Cart app set up yet, so I'm going to go to add it in the app store by clicking this Visit Shopify App Store button up here. And that's just opening up a new window for me. And then now that I know the app's name, I'm gonna just start typing it in to the search box. Here we go. Okay, so this is the app that I was talking about for our abandoned cart recoveries. So it's called Consistent Cart, and you can find out more information about it on this page as well as read some of the reviews. So we're not gonna go through all of that right now, and we're just gonna go ahead and hit Get to get it set up. Okay, and install app. Now the Consistent Cart app is free for when you're just getting started. So it's a great way to start building up. Now, depending on the amount of carts that it recovers for you, then it's gonna depend on the price. But we can go ahead and we're gonna just skip the tips and we're just gonna hit skip all. But you can definitely go through that. So now that we are in the Consistent Cart app, you can see all of the different elements on the side. So ones that I like to set up first are not actually the emails, but it is the different props that there are available. So this first one right here is the title bar toggle. So you can see here in their example of if someone adds a product to their cart and then they leave your site, it'll actually, or let's say they switch over to another tab, it'll actually have this don't forget or whatever message you want it to be to constantly be popping up right here in the title bar just to grab people's attention. So I always like to turn this on. So you can turn it on here and customize what it says. I think that works great. And we're gonna hit save. Okay, so that is turned on now. You can also turn on this favicon setting. So it'll actually show the number of items in the cart like you can see in this example of the, the two. So I always do like to add this on as well. So I'm gonna check to turn this on and you can change the color and the background color. So a lot of our colors are 
blue. So I'm going to click in here and I'm just going to change this to a blue color. Make it a little bit darker to match ours. Okay. And hit save. I do recommend doing a darker color there or something brighter like the red. Uh, if you do too light of a color, you may not be able to read everything as much. So just play around with that a little bit. Okay, so now that we have our title bar toggle set up, we are going to set up our shop pops. So this is another cool feature of the app. So I'm gonna just click on shop pops over here on the left hand side and then settings. So what shop pops are, you can see an example of it right here. But once someone purchases your products, they would then be added to this queue that could prompt their information to be shown here. So this is giving a lot of social proof if you're having people purchase from your site regularly of you know, people are purchasing every few minutes and it definitely adds that social proof and validity to your site that it is actually you know, a real site. So I always like to turn this on as part of the app as well. So we can check here to turn it on and you can change the timing between the pops, how long it's shown, and the best one right here is how many hours it's actually going to show before it changes to recently. So this is really important because so in their example right here, it shows us 44 minutes, which is great. It shows that someone purchased recently. And then so what this is saying is anytime it's over 48 hours since that purchase, it'll just say recently. So it'll say Victoria has recently purchased this T-shirt product. And it's important to do because I actually had been shopping on one site before and they hadn't had this set up. And because of that, it showed, I think it was like two weeks ago was the last purchase. And it definitely kind of did a negative effect. It, it didn't show the, the social proof in a right way. It kind of made me think, oh, no one's really purchasing from here. What's wrong? And so I would definitely make sure that you keep this at 48 or maybe even 24 hours so that it does show you know, the purchases that are done very quickly and then everything else is set to recently. And again, you can come in here and you can customize all of this more in terms of how you want it to look and how you want it to show up and what pages, but we're gonna just leave that right there for now. And I'm gonna hit save. Okay, and then there are a couple other options over here on the left-hand side in terms of having an add to cart pop up where it asks for an email address as soon as they add it to the cart as well as messenger and push notifications. But I typically don't turn these on as much. Um, and then I always just kind of turn on the title bar and the shop pops and then do the email. So you can definitely check those out. They are really dependent on your customers and how often you want to kind of gather information from them. I've noticed a lot of times it can kind of deter customers if you're being too advanced with kind of constantly reminding them to purchase. So I like to just kind of test things out, turn on the title, title bar toggle and the shop pops and then the emails, but you can always play around with these other areas. So if you click on email over here and we click on the auto series, we can see all the emails that we can actually get set up. So you can see here it's spinning to give the numbers, but everything's gonna be at zero because we just set this up and there's no abandoned carts on. So you do have the option to set up a couple different abandoned cart emails. So if we go into edit here, we can see exactly what it looks like. And they have a lot of defaults set up, which is really nice. So they have a default email subject, as well as the default message here that's gonna auto populate with whatever items they left in their cart and a call to action button that goes specifically to their cart page so that they can actually go in and, and purchase. So what we'll do, we can customize the name here, we can customize the email banner and when it's going to be sent. So I'm gonna go in now and add in my logo. So I'll do the upload image for the email banner. And I'm gonna just navigate to it on my computer real quick. Okay. And I'm just gonna make it a little wider so we're not cutting off the logo. Okay, and I'm gonna hit upload. And so that'll automatically put it at the top of this email. And I want this to be sent 
I'm not gonna do 24 hours. I want this to be sent six hours after they abandon the cart. So you can make that be whatever you want. And I really recommend you play around with the timing. See when people are purchasing the items from the cart the most of you know how long is it after they abandon their cart. And you can really play with the settings there. So I'm going to hit enable to go ahead and enable this email. And then I'm gonna hit save changes and then we can preview the email. So again, you can edit all of your text over here exactly how you want it to use these icons just like you would a Word document. But you wanna make sure that you're not gonna mess with anything in between the two brackets because that is automatically generating. So we can hit this preview email down here below. And you can see what the email looks now. So this is our header image that we added in. And here we have the message. These are the auto-generated products as well as the checkout button and we can hit okay. So that's what the email looks like currently. Now the checkout button wasn't the exact color of our brand, so we can actually go in and change that now if we click on additional settings. And you can see here that you can change the call to action text as well as the color and the text there. So we can come in and we can make this a little bit more close to our blue. And you can add different information here, like your email footer, or if you are wanting to append a certain link, like a discount code, um, you can go in and add all of that parameters there. But we're gonna just hit save changes. And now we'll preview the email one more time, just to make sure. We'll scroll down, and now we can see that that changed out to a better blue for us. We'll just hit okay. So now we've enabled this email. So if we go back and we click on email again, auto series, we can see that this is on now. So we can repeat this process for the same emails for abandoned cart email two and three. And we can go in and get those set up to be certain times after the first email if they haven't purchased yet. So for abandoned email three, though they do say here optional. Um, and I really do recommend if you're going to do a third email, if you're going to include a discount, don't include the discount till the third email. If you did it on the first or the second email with the discount code, then you're really kind of training your potential customers to wait for a discount code and to actually abandon your site on purpose just to get that discount code. So we wanna make sure that we're not doing that, we're not training our customers. So if you are gonna do a discount code, make sure you do it in this third one. And the first and second email, have it more be about the products any benefits, you can go in and, and customize the email to add a little bit more about your company or benefits of your product so that you can make sure that you're informing people and hopefully they purchase from there. Now, there are also other options of emails for the customer thank you email or order thank you or birthday email. All of these we're sending currently through MailChimp, so we're not gonna go in and set that up. And if you want to see a video in terms of how we actually set up those emails, I will link that in the description below. So that's really it in terms of the consistent cart. Once you have it running for a bit, you will start seeing the sales, the sent open clicks, so that you can really start seeing how it's working out for you. And you can also see that if you click on dashboard, and you can see all of your numbers here as well. So you can get a nice overview of how everything's working out in terms of this app. Thank you so much for watching this video tutorial and I hope you found it helpful. If you're looking for more ways on how to increase your conversion rate on your Shopify store, then I suggest you check out our class over here that is an online paid class all about how to increase your conversion rate on your site. So we go through more tips as well as abandoned carts there a little bit more. So make sure to check that out if you're wanting to increase your sales on your site today.